Today we're going over a simple hamstring, Nordic hamstring curl hack that will help improve the range of motion that you're able to do the Nordic hamstring through. It's taken my Nordic hamstring curl from a six inch box elevation with a band assist to a full range of motion band assist in just about a matter of a week. So not guaranteeing that it's gonna work for everybody, but it's something that worked well for me, making the exercise much more comfortable to perform. So a big part of this exercise is what happens with your feet. When you do not have a Nordic hamstring curl machine, a lot of times people will set up uh, any type of number of different configurations, such as the one I'm doing here with a bench using a barbell as the, the place that I dig my heels into. People will use straps, people will use hand assists, a uh, number of different setups that you can perform with it. But what happens is a lot of times the feet end up being free. And as a result, people don't necessarily know what to do with their feet. A lot of times people will just relieve them relaxed, which doesn't create the amount of tension you need, especially at that bottom of the hamstring, Nordic hamstring curl to explode out of that position. Um, other people will just kind of create tension in their calves by pressing their feet into what they would normally have a backstop in the Nordic hamstring curl machine or even a GHR machine has this backstop where you can almost leg press into the machine because there's this backstop there. Now what we need to understand about the Nordic hamstring curl is that it's an eccentric based exercise, meaning we're training the hamstrings in an eccentric or lengthening motion. Now a lot of times when you have somebody who does not have a Nordic bench, what that forces them to do is it forces them to plantar flex their feet, such as when you have somebody holding down your feet into the ground. This holding down the feet into the ground puts the ankle in a plantar flex position or the cap in a shortened position, meaning now you have your gastroc and your hamstring doing two different things. One is shortening and one is lengthening. And this is why a lot of times people will get this cramping or painful or uncomfortable sensation behind the knee, as opposed to when you can keep the foot neutral by having a plate behind you. That allows you to press into something to get a little bit more tension, but it also allows you to keep the foot in a neutral position. That way the hamstring and the gastroc are doing the same thing, both eccentrically elongating as you lower down and not performing opposite actions, shortening and lengthening. And that's again why people will get an uncomfortable sensation, especially the further down they go in the Nordic hamstring curl. So you may have some extra gains that are possible for you by just putting the foot into a neutral position um, if you're using some of these uh, different type of setups that doesn't not have a backboard. So a simple solution and a simple remedy to this is thinking about actively dorsiflexing your foot into the bench. And this is what I started doing differently is dorsiflexing my foot into the bench to create tension in eccentric elongation through both the hamstring and the gastroc as I perform the Nordic hamstring curl. And again, this is what's taken my Nordic hamstring curl from a band assisted to a six inch box to a band assisted to flat ground in a relatively very short period of time, in a matter of a week, which is much shorter than the amount of time necessary to create actual tissue adaptation. So the change here, really all that it was, was getting comfortable with the position. So if you do not have a backstop, I suggest that you dorsiflex your foot into the bench. If you do not, ha if you do have a backstop, great, but just make sure you keep your foot in a neutral position. You'll see a lot of people almost calf raise themselves out of this position by really plantar flexing their foot again. And that's not what you want to do with the exercise. You want to keep the exercise in a relatively neutral position. Use that backstop to your advantage. The final note I want to make in today's video is that a lot of people will argue you can't arch the back with the Nordic hamstring curl. Keep in mind that the back is very similar to the calf. Anytime you arch your back slightly or go into a slight anterior pelvic tilt with this exercise, you're going to eccentrically orient the hamstrings or lengthen the hamstrings. If you posteriorly pelvic tilt or do the reverse of that and you concentrically squeeze your glutes by shortening your glutes, then you're going to give the hamstring conflicting advice. You're going to give it a shortening sensation during a lengthening based 
exercise. So again, we need to keep the sensation similar to make the exercise achievable for the individual. So this is an eccentric lengthening exercise, which is going to be associated with a little bit of an anterior pelvic tilt. Now we can have a discussion of what is excessive, but you're going to see somebody have a little bit of an anterior pelvic tilt. And also we need to keep the foot into more of a neutral position so that we avoid the plantar flex position so that we avoid giving the muscles mixed signals, which leads to the cramping sensation, the inability to perform the exercise comfortably. So give these tips a shot. Drop a comment below as far as what you notice when you perform the Nordic hamstring curl. Did you find it helpful? And subscribe to the channel for future fitness tips.